thanks for the introduction and uh, and I, I think uh, hello everyone and uh, yeah I'm I'm going to give a talk about uh, a more specific and more physical area which is novel optically controlled or reconfigurable RF and millimeter wave switches and the context of my talk uh, is first is an introduction to RF and millimeter wave switches and uh, photoconductance theory and conventional modeling methods. And third is our recent works. And the last is uh, our current progress on developing some brand new industrial grade RF switches. And so first, what's an RF or millimeter wave switch. So the simplest configuration is a single pole, single row switch, which is simply a two port linear uh, RF network, uh, which can either let the signal through or block the signal by switching on or off an external excitation. And if we extend this a bit more, uh, we can build a multiple multi row switch by uh, combining several uh, single pole single row switches. So here we have a two pole uh, four row switch, which can have uh, more complicated applications. And the application of RF and millimeter wave switches can be the so first is the most intuitive or direct application is signal routing. So we can guide the signal uh, through different communication channels or paths by switching on and off uh, a certain combination of switches. And the the other two applications are. Uh, analog recording systems uh, or reconfigurable RF devices. So the latter two are kind of uh, a more advanced application which uh, need to involve uh, carefully designed uh, communication architectures or physical structures. And so currently available commercial switches can be characterized into three categories. So the first is pin dials, and we also have FETs and MEM switches. So these are all commercial, commercially available. And the last one is yeah, our, our investigation. So we are trying to build to use optical uh, control mechanism to design our switches. And so here we have a comparison of the of different types of RF switches. So as we can see uh, for our uh, mechanism optically controlled switches, uh, our, biggest, our biggest advantage is frequency range. Uh, our previous results shows that uh, it can work to, uh, uh, to more than 100 gigahertz and also the power handling and the linearity uh, are very excellent. That has been uh, proven either in theory or and measurements. And also the endurance is good, cost is very low and bias isolation is, is uh, very good. And yeah, so that's it for here and also, also uh, uh, our drawback can be, uh, so the size can be relatively large and also the bias require power, bias power requirements can be relatively high. So that's what we want to uh, solve in our research. So here we, yeah, we just, let's just go through some simple photoconductance theory. So. So if a photon is injected into a semiconductor, we can get a we can get a valence electron 
excited into the conduction band, which also left uh, a, an electron hole in the valence band. And so they can form a so-called free carrier. And also, we also have the recombination process. So without light uh, excitation, an electron in the conduction band can simultaneously uh, recombine with an uh, electron hole in the valence band. So in direct band gap semiconductors like uh, silicon, the dominating uh, recombination mechanism can be uh, the trapped assist assisted recombination, which is demonstrated here. So first, the electron uh, go to the defect state in the forbidden band gap, and then it will further go back to the valence band to recombine with the hole. And so macroscopically, this can be characterized by the by the carrier generation rate and the carrier recombination rate respectively. And the the different the difference is the time derivative of the excess carrier concentration. And at an equilibrium state, the excess carrying concentration is constant, which results in an increased material conductivity. And here we have some uh, simple math. So yeah, we have an expression of the generation rate, an expression of the recombination rate, and hence an expression of the uh, excess carrier concentration. There are also some parameters are defined as well. And so putting the formal things into the drift diffusion equations and solve it, we can get an analytical solution of the excess carrier concentration as this, and which can further give an expression of the photoconductivity through uh, this equation. And here we plot the solution uh, in MATLAB, which shows a perfect uh, ex uh, lo longitudinal exponential decay of the conductivity into the semiconductor depth. So this is uh, with different uh, intensity levels. Uh, so here we have, we are using an intrinsic uh, crystalline uh, silicon at a wavelength of 940. And to further interpreting this in EM simulation software like uh, CST, we can use either complicated uh, multilayer model uh, like this. Also, we can use a single layer model, which is much more simpler and time-saving in simulation. And here we uh, have uh, published work uh, about uh, a CPW-based uh, SPST switch. So we built the switch on a transparent fused silica substrate. And we put a silicon substrate on top of the metallization, the gold metallization here. And we then uh, insert a laser fiber underneath. Then the light can uh, propagate through the, the transparent fused silica, and then the gold gap into the silicon substrate, then we can have uh, a plasma region or a concentration of carriers uh, generated in the silicon substrate, which can act as a blockage of the RF signal, uh, a blockage or an absorption of the RF signal. Uh, so we can get an off state of the RF transmission. So we, if the laser is off, uh, all, all the signal can go through without any blockage. So that's an on state. So that's the me mechanism of the switching. So here, here we have some S parameter results of the switch. 
So we can see that the the on state or the dark state uh, S21 or the transmission is less than 3 dB uh, up to 50 gigahertz and the isolation uh, and the illumination uh, starts to become significant uh, or more than 15 dB uh, from 30 gigahertz so which shows a very wide band uh, switching frequency band from 30 gigahertz to up to at least 50 gigahertz and we can have two directions of improvement so first we can try to use low power chip and compact LED or Vixel as an alternative to laser and, and secondly we can try to use some more complicated uh, RF microwave structures like slow wave structure to make better use of the illumination area and here uh, yeah, I have designed the interdigitated uh, transmission line uh, gap, a uh, transmission line structure based CPW switch. So we gradually increase the interdigitated uh, section, and then we can make a better use of the trans the illumination area, and so hence the hi a higher isolation of the switch. So here we switch to a LED thanks to uh, to the interdigitated switch. So here is the result. As we can see, although we switch to a much lower power LED, we can still have a very nice uh, signal switching, even starting from 10 gigahertz to at least 30 gigahertz here. So here is just simulation result. Uh, yeah. And here, uh, I further improve this. So I, I use a, a typical microwave laminate in uh, instead of a, a fused silica substrate to get rid of the photolithography progress. And also we can have a better integration with other uh, RF devices because here we are using a typical microwave PCB. So, but a typical microwave PCB is uh, opaque. It's not, it's not transparent. So we need to drill holes along the gap to allow the light to get through. Also, we still use the LED here and the silicon substrate. And here we have some measurement result and it's also published. So we, as we can see, uh, when the LED is fully switched on, uh, we can have a 15 uh, isolation band from, from 6 gigahertz. Uh, and the insertion loss can be better than minus 3 dB uh, up to 30 gigahertz. So the switching band which can be from 6 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz with a single LED and without lithography and easy integration with other RF devices. Uh, you can, uh, you th is that your last slide? We need you to wrap up. You have one minute. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's, yeah, it's to conclude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank yeah, you. And, uh, yeah, and now we have a fundamental rethink. So, yeah, so for our, all published work, illumination is all from the top now. So we are trying to investigate some more fundamentally invention, innovative uh, mechanisms. So we illuminate from the bottom and this can have some huge improvement of the connectivity. And, and this work is supported by the, yeah, by the UOB impact uh, accelerator award and we yeah we are investigated a top uh, a, a completely new uh, mechanism so the bottom illumination mechanism so but but here we need to have some special treatment of the semiconductor we need a uh, better surface preservation and like staining stuff like that and it is also facilitated by our newly developed uh, 
for the connectivity modeling toolkits, uh, here we, we developed using a novel semi-analytical mathematical methods. And two types of five switches have been designed with simulation results showing that uh, a an insertion loss less than minus three uh, mi uh, of point zero point three dB and an isolation better than twenty five dB can be obtained at three gigahertz with a cheap and compact Vixel uh, with a very extremely low DC power consumption of only twenty milliwatts and a, um, a very small size, less than one millimeter for, the, for, a unit, for a unit device. And the prototype fabrication is underway in our clean room and workshop. Thank you very yeah. much, Yotian. Okay, and uh, that's it for my talk. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you very much uh, for everyone. Thank you for the excellent talk. I do not seem, we do not seem to have a question. Uh, so, uh, I think that I'm going to wrap up this session because we have research elevator uh, pieces immediately after in, in four minutes. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody, for attending this session. I think quite a wide variety of excellent research and different levels of people's careers here within Smart Eden Lab at the university. And of course, many thanks to the speakers. Uh, see you in three minutes in our next session.